Hi, I'm Vince and I'm a composer. And in this video, I wanted to just share with you a little bit of my process. I'm just gonna be working on some 1950s style orchestral tracks for a production music library. I've basically sketched out a few tracks using Logic. And I just thought I'd do a little vlog style fly on the wall video, turning that into something slightly more refined and a bit more arranged. So before I say anything else, I'll just play you a little bit of the track. So you can see this top part I've just recorded as a single pass. And then this other part I've recorded again as a single pass. The point is that I need to get to a stage where it is a bit more scored out because the ideas are slightly jumbled up and I'm not really thinking in terms of a realistic ensemble. You might have noticed as well up here I've got a little video of, uh, of Stephen Fry. Um, this sort of TV show is very much the type of show that this production music track um, is likely to be synced in. In fact, this uh, show, I got a placement on the end credits music. I know that it's like my target client in terms of licensing. It's a very quick way to tell whether or not the melody that you're writing is too cluttered or whether there's stuff in the arrangement that's di too distracting. What I've done is I've used Isotope's very clever plugin. It's called the Music Rebalance Tool that allows you to do a pretty decent job of isolating the vocal track from the rest of the mix, it's not perfect. This show just has that kind of slightly silly, slightly decadent kind of lightness of like all these sort of unnecessary gadgets. I guess it's it's kind of that thing which happened in the 50s, which was this explosion of consumer products. A modern kitchen in a modern flat, if we're lucky enough to have a flat. It's in that tradition, but it does it in a slightly self-aware and to me quite joyful way slightly poking fun at the fact that how crazy that like you know this thing exists where you can vacuum pack your steak and cook it for 10 hours in like a water bath but also how wonderful i guess the first thing i'm going to do is just go through and separate out the individual lines just before i commit to that process i think i'm going to just listen through to the whole track remind myself what it sounds like and think whether or not there are any specific orchestration ideas like other instruments that I want to add that would have consequences for the string arrangement. So far I like the simplicity of it being just strings. Then I do mix up the instrumentation here a bit. And I've deliberately gone for colours that are quite unobtrusive, but also very distinct. This section may be problematic, because, because I've just blithely plonked away on a pizzicato patch there as the sort of engine and um, there's all of this like dense string writing going on on top so we're probably going to run out of voices a bit. If I am going to do a live recording with live strings I'd like the arrangement to sound full in a single pass. I don't really want to have to rely on like doing all the pizzicato as a single pass. I like the idea of the players kind of experiencing the the full track as their performing I think that would help in terms of just creating like dynamic and d cohesiveness and just vibe so yeah right that's the plan I'm going to start by breaking out this MIDI and then I'm going to go into Sibelius and start arranging the strings and then after that I'm gonna probably come back into Logic reprogram the strings and then enhance and decorate it with other winds and little percussion bits and maybe additional harp glisses and stuff like that but that's the sort of loose plan for this video i probably i don't know how far i'll get 
if we're lucky we might get through like a good chunk of the arranging in Sibelius and you can see a bit of the process. So the way that I like to split up MIDI regions like this currently is um, like select all of these, then hit uh, Command J to join them. Scan through and see if they're on the grid. Um, in this case, they're not really on the grid. At least these ones aren't. Um, oops. So then just um, get them on the grid if necessary. You can see I've got a negative track delay here of minus 50 seconds on the instrument. Okay, and then when I've gone through that process that I like to use this um, thing I've got set up as a key command, set MIDI channel to voice number. So I'm just gonna do that with a key command. Then I've got another key command set up to split out this region by voice number. Now that we've assigned them and it's actually put it down here. Um, and then I need to go back and redo that key command just to reset the voices. Um, I've got another video about that on my channel in case you're curious. And then I just need to kind of manually go through and check that it's done what I wanted it to do. Um, so that looks fine. This looks a little weird. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to actually just go back and rejoin these and just work on the part because I think it can be simpler. Okay, so I fiddled around with it and I've ended up with this, which is a bit more clearly in three parts. Um, and that just required a little bit of playing around at the keyboard and sort of figuring out what was my intention and how can I just simplify this. And so now when I go back and split it using that method before, it'll naturally break out the parts in a more a sensible way. Little moments like that are just really good to bring the music into focus a bit more. I want to keep the number of voices consistent if possible. So in a passage like this, I've been very careful uh, specifically as I was playing it to keep the, the parts to four. Each chord has four individual voices and um, that's just something that I've worked on as a skill specifically in the context of jazz piano, like these four part block chord voicings and practicing certain motions and movements like that in closed position. Um, whether that stays as a close position thing in the arrangement, I'm not sure. I might change it to a drop two just to give it a slightly more open sound. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on splitting out the part. Gonna select everything, nudge it all along so it's a bit closer, and then hit Q to quantize. Actually, I'm not gonna quantize these again because uh, they're intended to be trills. And then here, the main thing I want to do is separate the bass line from the chords because I've just played it dum -da, dum -da, dum -da, with my left and right hand. So usually, this is pretty simple to eyeball. So I'm going to duplicate the track, drag it over, and on this lower one I'm going to get rid of all of the chords and just leave the bass line. So certainly everything above here. I can safely delete. That's probably where our split point is. Yeah, I think that's pretty much done it. Then I'll just do the reverse. 
So as you can see, I've left the pizzicato right hand just as a single block. I'm not even going to attempt to split that out because I know for a fact that the number of voices in the chords vary a fair bit. And I also know that in this instance, it's more useful to see them on the score as a chord um, because I'll be using it as a reference of what the harmony is doing in any given point. You can see, like, just by looking at this thing, as a consequence of the way that I've just thrown ideas in there, it's not um, particularly readable, but that's okay. I don't need the lines to make sense yet. That's what the next stage is going to be all about. So I think that's it. So we've basically got now some nice clean MIDI to work with. I'm just going to only export the strings for the time being. So I'm just going to select all and export as a MIDI file. For things like this where I don't really care about holding onto the file later on, I just always save to my downloads folder, which I periodically empty. So the downloads folder is sort of just like a dumping ground for files that I don't really care about being backed up or stored. I think what I'm going to do now is make a cup of tea or coffee um, because it's kind of a natural break in the process. So. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick five or ten minute break and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, we're back. I've had a cup of tea and messaged some people on WhatsApp. I've gotten my dose of natural light and now I'm ready to come back and refocus on the task in hand. I've already exported the MIDI file, so I'm just going to open up Sibelius. Just have a quick check in the notation tab. So minimum duration quaver. I think that's probably fine. Oh no, it needs to be 16th notes. No tuplets allowed, no triplets allowed. So let's just see what that gives us. Right, so yeah, it's pretty ugly. What is handy is we can, we can, uh, for example here, we can simplify the interpretation of the MIDI by going to renotate performance and I know for a fact that this part is meant to be quavers so you know we can do things like that as we go to simplify the material here it looks like it's just all a bit off the grid which is strange because I did check maybe it'd be worth at this point just checking <laughs> Okay, so it seems like a few bits kind of slip through the net. What's this? <laughs> what on earth is going on? Silly Sibelius. So what I might do as a final check is just play through and um, follow it. Just I've selected all of the MIDI here and I'm just going to play through and it, you know, check with my ear and my eye. I'm actually going to speed up the tempo a bit as well, just so we get through this part faster. So I've I've done another pass of tidying up the MIDI and logic, and now we're going to head back to Sibelius. I mean, it's pretty ghastly. We're going to have a look at it there. If we zoom out a little bit, you know, here's what we're dealing with. It's pretty gross. Don't know why it's lagging so much there. Possibly just to emphasize the point emotionally of the gargantuan amount of data. But um, at any rate, uh, it doesn't matter because things like this, where, you know, ideally that would be a quaver, I'm not too bothered about because it's not going to affect my, um, my ability to just crack on with the arrangement and I can kind of tidy those things up as I go or not as the case may be. My purpose with this Sibelius session is to just organize the parts into violin one, violin two, viola, cellos, double bass. So I'm just going to be using this to kind of pick from. Um, before I get started I'm just going to select all and go to the advanced filter and just get rid of all the text. Um, the, specifically the text that says this. I 
which is all of this controller data. So I'm just going to delete that. So let's just start by inputting the melody. And I'm also going to have in the background my logic project here, which I'm going to just continually refer to as the kind of guide sound that I'm after. So I'm quite happy with this general orchestration. Whoops. Um, I'm just going to, I think, more or less copy this into Sibelius verbatim, although this pizzicato bit will need a bit of massaging. Um, oh, that reminds me. So we've got the, the, the rhythm section part here, just the rolling umcha umcha in the pizzicato. So I'm going to select all of that copy it and I'm going to actually create a piano in this case. What this allows me to do is kind of quickly see at a, at a glance what the harmony is at any given point in the piece. What I might do is just set this all to quavers. I'm also going to open up the mixer and just mute the piano channels and that just means it won't happen in the playback when I'm listening because I don't actually want the sound of a piano but I do just want it there as a visual reference. So the first thing we've got is pizzicato sort of rhythm section plus this little string pairing so let's just put that in let's just do this phrase by phrase. Let's just copy that across da -da, da -da. And then let's take the other one as well. Now this first bit we've got this kind of thing happening. Ba -ba -boom. So maybe we want that in the violas. And maybe this doubled in the cellos. And this is pits. Maybe like that. Oh, let's put in the key signature as well. We're in E flat major. Maybe if we do bum bum. Oh, another cheat. I think I'm going to just <laughs> turn this into a treble clef because I'm no good at reading alto clef. I'm not getting any sound from Sibelius right now for some reason. Look, that's why we're in rewire mode. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording while we deal with this issue. Okay, we're back. It's slightly later in the day. Um, I had this issue with Sibelius where it kind of got caught in rewire mode, so it messed up the playback devices and then um, I had to sort of set it up again and also set it up so that it would work with the screen record software so had a few delays getting started but anyway um, let's get back to the arrangement. <clears throat> Turn off live playback because it's otherwise going to sound a bit wonky. I've put in the top two lines and I'm just going to use the viola and, and uh, cello in Divisi to just fill out those pizzicato chords I think. So let's just hop over to the MIDI. <clears throat> so here are our chords. We also have them up here of course. So as you can see <clears throat> these are all three part voicings right now. Um, so I could either reduce them to two parts and outline the harmony just with two part by chords and distribute one to the viola and one to the cello um, or I could make them into four parts I think in this case I'll just reduce it to two yeah you really don't need more than two notes to convey the meaning harmonically there I'll copy the rhythmic values over and modify them like that and I'm doing this all on a single stave even though I'm going to split them out in a moment
Just create a bit of variation there. Um, let's see how that sounds. Um, a bit distracting maybe, because you have this upward line. I might just keep it really simple and just repeat. Just do that so it doesn't draw attention to itself. Um, and now I'm going to use this clever feature called Explode, which is in note input. I'm going to explode it to the viola and cello. Oops. And so that does that. Um, and we sort of want the chords to continue, don't we? And then there's a little phrase there. So. In this instance, it probably doesn't save me much time to do the explode thing, so I'll just do it like that. Um, There's actually a third part to this harmony, so uh, I'll just go back and add that in. So we've run out of voices. Um, let's just add it in the viola and see what happens. I could divisi the cello here. In fact, let's do that. Yeah. Um, need to set that to be arco. <clears throat> so moving on, so let's put in the top line. Just to say, even though I've been using Sibelius for a while and um, been writing music for a good long while, I'm still um, a little bit slow with this part of the process compared to some of the other parts of the process, probably because most of the time it's not a requirement for me to produce a score. That's why I've decided to do it this way. This is very much a decision on my part, wanting to push my uh, skill set a little bit further and just work in a slightly different way. So if you have any uh, suggestions on how to make things even smoother, I'd love to hear them. I'm not um, making this video as an expert. It's more just to show you where I'm at right now. Now, these are all nice two-part voicing, so you can probably get quite far by copy and pasting these into the viola and cello, I imagine. Let's explode those. So we can have both violins together here, and probably we wanted both violins together here as well. Let's go grab that melody line. Here it is. It's obviously messed up the trills there. I think I might just uh, redo that quickly. I'm going to use the live record feature of Sibelius. <laughs> And just like that, we can just add the trills. Um, oh no, they're here, aren't they? So we have a sort of answer from a lower string voice. So probably want that to be viola. Even though technically it could be continued in the violin, you see it's within range, but I like the idea of it being clearly a call and response type deal. And so just having that tonal change and that positional change, I think will be nice. So the uh, 
the violins, while the viola's doing that, the violins can take over on the pits duties. That sort of... just have to be careful, that melody note, which is a major seventh, is sort of inherently unstable, so I just have to be careful how I frame it harmonically. And like that... Um, Yeah, I guess I'll do four part voicings then. So this is what I was doing. Um, and we can do that trick again. Maybe that could even be done as double stops, just to strengthen the sound. I like the idea of emphasising that note with a pizzicato. Boom, boom. Maybe we have the cello double the basses, that seems a little more logical. So the priority here clearly is is going to be having that nice string low string pad with the legato string melody. So I'm not too bothered if I run out of voices for the pizzicato thing. That could always be filled in by a little bit of woodwind or something. So let's get those nice string pads in. Yeah, I guess we'll forego doubling the top line here and just have the three across the violin two, viola and cello. We'll get that little pizzicato line, that can be violin one as well. Oh, that looks like it maybe didn't get split out, but that's okay. I can just input that manually, that's fine. goes into our lovely delicious four part. Maybe we'll do that across the viola and celli. This is a little bit unruly to navigate so um, I need to maybe do a bit of spend a bit of time figuring out if there's a more friendly way to display this or to prep the MIDI with minimal effort. So what I'm going to do here is reduce it to two parts, I think, before copying it. So here I can use the reduce feature, which is very handy. It's the opposite of... Oh, oh dear. Uh, please don't crash. <laughs> oh, Sibelius! I don't mind losing work, but it is especially hard when it's work that is a little bit on the tedious side. How long am I going to wait? Uh, okay, fine. Force quit. Wow, okay, and this dialogue box still won't go away. <laughs> Please autosave. Yes. Oh, you've opened, given me the MIDI, but not the the actual project. Ah, no. <laughs> Trying to conceal my rage and disappointment. <laughs> Hopefully that gave you an idea of how um, I go about putting things into Sibelius and arranging strings as I go from MIDI. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now and hopefully I'll be able to speed through and get back to where I was fairly quickly. Um, so the moral of the story is don't forget to save your work when working in Sibelius. Uh, thanks for your attention and good luck with your own creations. I'll see you on the next video.